Welcome to a Tuesday, live right here on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. It's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Sports Grid Network as well. I am Ben Stevens. A Tuesday following a Monday night doubleheader of football to end out week number two of the National Football League regular season. We recap those two games from last night, what it tells us about some contenders, both for the AFC, the NFC, and potentially a meeting in the Super Bowl as well. We'll go around college football, a new edition of Ben's Top 10, take a check in at Major League Baseball as well, and already set the stage for week number three of the NFL season. That comes our way in just two days from now. But let's look back on week number two of the NFL campaign. And the Buffalo Bills continue to dominate. Absolutely walloping. The Tennessee Titans last night at home. Buffalo wins 41-7. to Let me say that again. 41-7. to The Bills cover as a 10-point favorite in their home opener last night. It was a holiday in Orchard Park, New York, and they made that holiday a full-blown celebration, easily covering as a 10-point favorite. The total closed at 47.5. I hope you got it there because Buffalo's 41 points push us to the over. And that Buffalo offense orchestrated by Josh Allen, the NFL MVP frontrunner, It was tuning last night, 26 of 38 for Allen, 317 yards through the air, four touchdown strikes, only 10 rushing yards on only one carry, but a very impressive day for Josh Allen, who continues to completely obliterate his passing yards props. The one and a half passing touchdowns was heavily juiced to the over, and Josh Allen makes good on that price. Four touchdown passes for Josh Allen yesterday, three of them go to Stephon Diggs, who had 12 grabs on 14 targets for 148 yards and three touchdowns. No Gabe Davis last night, but Josh Allen and that Bills offense still found their way to absolutely dominate the Tennessee Titans. The Buffalo Bills don't just circle the wagons. They are the wagon in the National Football League, certainly offensively. Through the first half, of last night's game. The Buffalo Bills had 14 offensive possessions through their first game and a half in 2022. They had not punted once, and they scored on eight of those 14 possessions. The Buffalo Bills have outscored their first two opponents by a margin of 72 to 17. And that defense that was the top scoring unit and the top total defense in the league last year looked to live up to that billing. Pun very much attended again last night. Holding Derrick Henry to 13 rushes Only 25 yards, one of the worst performances of his career, intercepting Ryan Tannehill two times as well in the absolute route last night. And Buffalo's odds continue to work in their optimistic favor in every market. They are now minus 360 to win the AFC East. They were minus 290 entering last night. They are now plus 340 to win the AFC Championship, excuse me, plus 240 to win the AFC Championship. Those odds continuing to work more and more in their favor. And a huge game for Josh Allen and company in South Beach this upcoming Sunday against Miami. They entered last night as a four and a half point favorite. They are now a six point favorite on the road against the Miami Dolphins. And their odds to win Super Bowl 57, also shorter as well, plus 450, the shortest price we have seen for Buffalo so far this season. Hey, welcome to our Sports Grid Radio audience here, the opening hour of the morning after live on this Tuesday, Sirius XM Channel 159, all of our terrestrial radio affiliates as well. I am Ben Stevens. The Buffalo Bills, dominant last night in the first game of the doubleheader on the Monday night. The Philadelphia Eagles also looked the part yesterday. A dominant performance in Phillies home opener against the Minnesota Vikings. The Birds win 24-7, to easily covering as a short two-and-a-half-point favorite at home last night. A total of 49-and-a-half stays under. The Vikings only score seven points. It's the first time they've scored a touchdown or less since early October of last year. But Josh Allen is the NFL MVP favorite. Plus 340 is his number. Jalen Hurts now has the third best price at 10-1, to only behind Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Because of the performance 
that Jalen Hurts put together last night. 26 of 31, 333 yards through the air. A touchdown, 11 carries for 57 yards and two additional rushing scores. Tying Michael Vick for the best performance in Philadelphia Eagles franchise history at the quarterback position. The only two QBs in the history of Philadelphia to throw for 300 or more yards and rush for two touchdowns. So the Eagles have a huge game last night, 24-7, to the final, and pay attention to where Philly is now in the NFC Championship market. Their number also growing shorter following the outcome last night on a Monday. They are tied for the second best price alongside the Green Bay Packers at 5-1, to only behind the Buccaneers, who are the favorites at plus 310. But the Eagles entering last night, plus 550. The market moving in Philly's favor by 50 cents. The Eagles win total now is up from nine and a half where it was in the preseason to 11 and a half in the over has the juice. The Eagles entered this year with the second easiest schedule according to win total projections. A man that was in Philadelphia last night to take in the Eagles season opener at home. Kevin Walsh joins the show next year on the morning app. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. This is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bama. I think Vandy can win the game, take it one and In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get in. the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. prove how much better they are than Texas this actually matters winning this game 65 nothing matters because see they see because UL Monroe lost to Texas 52 to 10 oh you team is playing defense this year I understand it's Kent State wow. and UTEP but they're only allowing on average eight points per game they held Kent State to just three points last week Kevin we talked about that total mm -hmm. on last week's show college football today only on sports grid the morning after now, Dr. Chow, as you look at Justin Herbert moving forward, do you expect him to miss any time? Well, there's good news and bad news about cartilage fracture. The good news is the lung is not at risk at all. Perhaps it's a little bit less painful in the early going than a bone rib fracture. But the downside is cartilage fractures and cartilage injuries linger longer. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. The players we know are in are Justin Jefferson at 9,000, Stephon Diggs at 7,500. Crowder was getting run even in week one while McKenzie was fully healthy. So if you see both those guys see their uptick in snaps, I think that Crowder, if he's going to be at half of the ownership of McKenzie, McKenzie didn't do much besides just catch the touchdown. And if that just happens to be Crowder that ends up catching the touchdown instead of Isaiah McKenzie, then you're going to benefit and have leverage over the field. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The Jags shut out the Indianapolis Colts 24 0 and now sit in first place in the AFC South, a division that they can absolutely win. They should be shorter than their updated price of plus 340, though that number was plus 650 before they won this football game. You told people, money line dog, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. Only on Sports Grid.
fresh off a trip from Philadelphia. Okay, Dubs, Kevin Walsh joins us here on the morning after on this Tuesday to look back at the end of week number two in the National Football League regular season, including what he saw with his own very two eyes last night in the city of brotherly love. We'll go around the NFL and then set the stage early on for week number three and some of those changing markets around the league, including for the league's most valuable player. Kevin Walsh, thank you for joining us here on this Tuesday, live on the morning after. One of those guys moving up the MVP board, the quarterback for your birds, Jalen Hurts. Now the third best price, only behind Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. A huge night mm -hmm. for Hurts and the Eagles, Kev, in that 24-7 to victory over the Vikings. Yeah, the MVP movement, I'll, I'll be honest, did stun me a little bit, even if I'm, you know, constantly tweeting hashtag MVP season and maybe trying to start a link wide MVP chant. Uh, a lot of respect for Hertz in the market. And I think it's twofold. One is, look, I mean, obviously last night was probably the best game of his career, even if he didn't do much in the second half with the passing total, the 10 for 10 start. Uh, in the game, maybe 11 for 11, you know, over 300 passing yards, all of that. But Jalen Hurts and what he's able to do as a runner right now can be a difference maker. While I understand that Josh Allen certainly can move as well, Hurts has, uh, I would say right now, eclipsed him in terms of rushing ability at the quarterback position. So if Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen are basically going to be throwing three touchdowns per game, well, Hurts being able to run one in every single game with 50-plus rushing yards every single game can be a difference maker. The other thing that I think has Jalen Hurts rocketing up the board, and, and, and this is the thing. I know we always do this, the bias stuff, okay? So you can tell me, is there's an argument to be made that the quarterback for the three best teams in the NFL are the first three quarterbacks you see on the MVP board right now. The yeah. Eagles have top four odds to ultimately win the Super Bowl, right? The kind of stop got there is Tampa Bay, and Brady's not been off to a good start. But obviously what the Eagles did last night on both sides of the football is incredibly impressive. And if the Birds are going to be able to compete for a number one seed, then Jalen Hurts is absolutely going to be in this conversation. And Kev, the idea around Jalen Hurts, in my estimation, and Philadelphia in general entering this year was he had all of the offensive pieces he could ever hope for to have this success. And it seems, listen, it's only two weeks of football. We understand that. And we slightly overreact maybe to what we are seeing. But it seems he is taking full-blown advantage of that because, as Kev mentioned, he is now the second quarterback in Eagles history alongside Michael Vick to throw for more than 300 yards in a game and rush for two touchdowns. He went well over his rushing yards prop last night of 51 and a half with 57. He has that ability not to add 30 or 40 yards per game on the ground, but to truly add it up with his legs. He had 90 week number one against the Lions, 11 carries. The volume is there for 57 yards last night. And you see that reflected in his QBR and how he is perceived in the National Football League. And again, Kev, it's some of those pieces at his disposal. Dallas Goddard leading all Eagles receivers last night. The tight end, a big night, well over 80 yards. Devontae Smith, after a goose egg, week number one, bounces back with 80 mm -hmm. last night. A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts already have that familiarity. Another good night, but let's focus on that Bird's defense as well. Mm. For the most part, slowing down Justin Jefferson, intercepting Kirk Cousins, three separate times Darius Slay a ginormous night with two picks of his own and now Kev Kirk Cousins two and ten straight up in his career on Monday Night Football yeah here's the thing with Kirk Cousins man this is why the Packers are favored to win the division because sometimes this is a complicated sport to break down and sometimes the easiest thing that's staring you right in the face is what you need to go with Aaron yep. Rodgers, Kirk Cousins. And that's the reality. You know, I was talking with someone last night. They're like, I think if I put Rodgers on the Vikings, they'd be favored to win the Super Bowl. I said, yeah, you're probably right. Probably so. Yep. But instead, Rodgers is on the Packers, and Kirk Cousins is on the Minnesota Vikings. So, and, and that's the other problem with it as well. Is I know some people say, like, oh, come on. Like it was you know, Monday Night Football prime time. How is that a viable excuse like, oh like the lights were too bright like he could only play Sunday one o'clock games that doesn't even really make 
any sense. And I, I have to add this to the conversation as well, because you mentioned Darius Slay. Winning Defensive Player of the Year for a cornerback is nearly impossible. It is basically just, at this rate, an edge rusher's award. And if you look at the start that both Miles Garrett and Micah Parsons are off to, both now tied co-favorites at 4-1, to one, again, it's going to be nearly impossible. However, the only way a corner can get involved is lead the NFL in interceptions. It's how Trayvon Diggs was a part of that conversation so much last year. If we are in 10 weeks from now where Darius Slay is leading the NFL in picks, people will say, remember on Monday Night Football when he, to a degree, locked up Justin Jefferson and had multiple picks on Monday Night Football. Darius Slay is 75-1. to I think you could argue value, but absolutely tough to do it at the cornerback position. It really is an edge rushers award, and we'll look at some of those individual awards and where the market has moved in our next segment together. But he did shut Mm -hmm. down Justin Jefferson for the most part. Six grabs for 48 yards, sure, but he was targeted 12 times. Darius Slay made a huge impact on last night's game. And again, the Vikes, only seven points, their lowest scoring output since early October of a season ago. Kev, the other game last night, as we look at where the things are in divisional odds at the moment, the Vikings move back plus uh, plus 140 now in the NFC North behind the Green Bay Packers. The Eagles, however, minus 200 to win the NFC East, the best odds of any team that we have seen so far in the NFC East this year and their odds only improving each and every week the same can be made for buffalo kev the market continues to work in favor of the bills 41 to 7 last night a dominant performance easily covering as a 10 point favorite against the titans and now the bills kev minus 360 to win the afc east it's the best odds of any team on that side of the league and the reason the odds for buffalo in the afc championship market continue to improve as well yeah, and we've talked about that as it uh, relates to the full scope of the AFC picture. The clearest pathway there for Buffalo in division is the uh, expectation. But we're going to find out here week number three. They make a trip to Miami. Yep. Even if that game is one where Buffalo wins, it's a six-point spread. A cover for Miami, I think, could go a long way in terms of just perception. And if the Dolphins win, now they're not going to move to favorites. But right now we sit at minus 360 Buffalo. Does a Dolphins win take that? Down to minus 200, I would say yes. Maybe even lower, honestly. Because all of a sudden, right, you start to talk tiebreakers and obviously what that would mean for the Miami Dolphins to be able to then go out there and beat, you know, Bill Belichick, the Baltimore Ravens on the road, and then the Super Bowl favorites, that would be massive. Mike McDaniel might drop to sub 4-1 to to win Coach of the Year if they are able to pull off that upset there. Incredibly impressive from the Buffalo Bills to take nothing away from them. I think you could argue equally, if not more, the takeaway is on the side of the Tennessee Titans, Ben. What a nightmare. I don't think they deserve to be in front of Jacksonville anymore when we talk about the AFC South divisional odds. And I think Malik Willis is becoming one of the most intriguing names in terms of awards markets. If he can play double-digit games as the Titans starter, he maybe deserves to be the favorite for Offensive Rookie of the Year. And we saw Malik Willis last night. It was a blowout. We will talk to a Tennessee Titans reporter later on in hour two if there Mm. are any conversations in Nashville about Malik Willis actually getting a start this season. Kev, I also think if Miami is able to even cover at home against the Buffalo Bills on Sunday, that will lead to some more optimism for the Finns because now that line is ballooned from four and a half at its open to Buffalo laying six on the road all of the markets love the buffalo bills and so far this season the bills have proved they are deserving of all of that market optimism right now in the afc south by the way the jacksonville jaguars are the only team to record a win so far this season the changing markets in the individual award races in the nfl up next Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College football today. Alabama in winning SEC championship. 
champion. It's the Island of Misfit Toys. Fantasy Sports so, Today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Two years away. When this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash of In-game injuries. Line, but you can take the points. Access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game go. live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. I'm slightly conflicted is because I feel like I love so much on the board, but do I love one thing more than another? Can I call one thing my favorite bet or my best bet? We'll find out. And there's just overall chaos is what it looks like with this offense. On fourth down, Jacoby Myers and Davian Harris running into each other, but the Patriots getting bailed out by a PI down the field. The morning after only on Sports Grid. And now you're starting to see these younger players starting to develop, younger players starting to grow. And we're watching these Mariners who may get in the postseason. Talk about the bad beach all the time. That's a good win, you know, because it, it was one that I don't know if it was the right side. <laughs> watching the game and then watching the way it played out. The Bostonian versus the book only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Harwin said the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Congratulations to Florida Blue. A $60 million deal through 2027 with Inter Miami. Not just the facility in the stadium, but a training facility, Broward County, Fort Lauderdale, and a tie-in with the Unified Paralympic team, which is also very important. What they're as, uh, trying to do as well is to reach into the Florida, South Florida, Hispanic community and Florida Blue, uh, the subsidiary, the name of the Florida Blue Cross Insurance Company, is generating significant input and community activation by doing this. MLS also picks up a substantial naming partner combined with Salt Lake and their $100 million deal makes it a prolific growth bet for the MLS down the road and certainly for soccer in South Florida. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game. Welcome back to the morning after live right here mm. on this Tuesday on Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. OK Dubs Kevin Walsh is here for a second consecutive segment. Segment. He'll make that three coming up and maybe even four mm. to end out this opening hour on this Tuesday TMA. Kev, we looked at the MVP odds based on the results of last night. Two of the three best odds were in action last night and certainly lived up to where their prices are to win the league's most valuable player in the NFL. Josh Allen was the preseason NFL MVP favorite. His closing number before the year got underway was 7-1. to one. It is now plus 340. He is ahead of Patrick Mahomes, who has that price around plus 450 at the moment. And Jalen Hurts leapfrogs up the board. Now the third best number at 10-1. to one. Let's start with Josh Allen first. Kev, we've made this point numerous times, and you correlate the markets here. Josh Allen is the NFL MVP favorite. He is the quarterback in a quarterback award for the favorites to win the AFC East at a minus 360 price, the favorites to win the AFC, and now the shortest number we have seen on Buffalo as the Super Bowl favorites at plus 450. What level of play do you think Josh Allen needs to maintain throughout the rest of 2022 to remain that front runner to win the MVP? So obviously, I mean, the level he's at right now is certainly good enough, right? Averaging 300 yards per game through the air, and he has seven total touchdowns in the two games up until this point here as well. The Bills, though, have a lot of expectations, and they've maybe blown past those expectations to open the season up, right? 
with you know a 21 point victory in game number one, and then the, the complete domination of Tennessee last night. They are going to Miami, then they go to Baltimore, home versus Pittsburgh, and then they're at Kansas City. Just pause it right there. Yeah. Obviously, Tua last week was, you could argue, star of the week, six passing touchdowns. The, the only team that will challenge them in the division. That's a massive game. Lamar Jackson is looking like he will be in this MVP race, right? Mm-hmm. And if not for the collapse against the Miami Dolphins, I think Lamar would be the third choice on this board. I think we would be asking ourselves, are the Ravens the best team in the NFL? If they were able to say win that game, like the way it looked like they were going to. Again, Pittsburgh, they're going to be maybe, a, legitimately, they might be a 14-point favorite in the game, so remove that. And then they go at Patrick Mahomes, the second choice on this board. They're going to be favored in that game, Buffalo. The look-ahead line tells us they're going to be favored in that game. If they are 6-0, and Ben, Josh Allen is underneath, I think, plus 100 to win the MVP award. However, if they are 2-2 two and two in these next four games... I'm not sure he's still the, regardless of how he plays, I'm not sure he's still the MVP favorite. I think it's a great point, and we'll focus on that theoretical MVP match bet between the two best prices at the moment, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. If Kansas City is an underdog in that game against Buffalo, where right now every market has the Buffalo Bills favored in something, it would be the first time since the start of 2020 that KC would be booked as a dog but it's interesting here Kevin you brought up this point in correlation to Jalen Hurts you see here that Josh Allen is the MVP favorite yet Patrick Mahomes has better odds to lead the league in passing to lead the league in passing touchdowns which goes to show where Josh Allen can utilize his legs we saw 56 yards for Josh Allen in that opening win in the dismantling of the reigning Super Bowl champs the LA Rams but that's where guys like Jalen Hurts in Lamar Jackson, who was sensational against Miami. Tua was just a tad better against Baltimore secondary. That's where their rushing yards and what they can do with their legs certainly comes into a factor of this MVP race. Oh, it, it absolutely does, right? It's an edge that Allen has specifically over Patrick Mahomes. The interesting thing for Mahomes, though, is he's going to be at Indianapolis this coming week. That he has Sunday night football versus Tom Brady, Monday night football versus the Vegas Raiders at home, and then they host the Buffalo Bills. We could very much so just if we enter that game, you know, the the Chiefs will they be favored in Tampa Bay? Probably not. It depends the health of the Tampa wide receivers. But again, let's right. just have some fun with it and say both of those teams enter five and zero. Oh. I think you're very much so looking at a game where the winner is the favorite for the MVP award at that point in time. Because the interesting thing is, we keep saying to ourselves, you know, okay, the Bills have the easy pathway, the Bills have the easy pathway. But the Chiefs are the Chiefs. And again, like every year, the playoffs goes through Patrick Mahomes. If the Chiefs finish with the number one seed in the AFC, with the way we've talked about the AFC West all offseason long, I don't know what Josh Allen can do at that point in time. you I don't think, Ben, we can overstate how important week number six Chiefs-Bills really is. I think it's a great point. I think if both players maintain the level that we have seen so far leading into that game, whoever wins might even get into our first minus money price that we see sure. in the MVP market to start this season. Big games for both of these teams, though, on the road booked as the favorites Week number three, as we said, Buffalo, a favorite in Miami. Kev, that line has already moved multiple times. It was four and a half before Monday night. Balloons to six in favor of the Bills in South Beach. Now it's five and a half taking off that hook. Maybe it has already hit its peak against the Finns. The Chiefs, a six and a half point favorite against the Colts. Indianapolis so far this year, a goose egg. Zero wins so far, booked as a favorite in each of their first two games. So, Kev, let's continue to work through some of these awards because last night on display, we thought Justin Jefferson for the Minnesota Vikings Mm -hmm. against the Philadelphia Eagles. Six grabs, 48 yards, targeted 12 times. Darius Slay, a masterful performance for that secondary 
for Philadelphia. But Jay Jett still remains the favorite to win AP NFL Offensive Player of the Year at 7-1. The MVP is a quarterback award. Nine straight winners have played quarterback, 14 of the last 15. But in Offensive Player of the Year, that's where you get the other skill positions, the wide receivers and the running backs. And we see some wideouts up there. Like Stephon Diggs, Kev, over 120 yards in both <laughs> of his first two games, three receiving touchdowns mm-hmm. last night. He is 10-1. to 1. As Stephon would tell you, he is him. We might see that in the NFL Offensive Player of the Year award race as well. The thing about he being him is the real him of the team is Josh Allen, right? It, it's Josh Allen's yeah. team. Everybody knows that. This is something that we've – so I am very much so in favor of offensive player of the year transitioning to everybody but quarterbacks because the right. MVP is a quarterback award, which it should be, by the way, because they are the most valuable players on, on their teams. But what we have certainly not seen yet is a world where the MVP and the offensive player of the year come from the same team but are different people. The world where the offensive player of the year is Stefan Diggs and the MVP is Josh Allen is just hard for me to wrap my head around, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Is that something that voters are going to be willing to do? I don't don't think so. That doesn't sound right to me. Again, maybe maybe I'm wrong here, but that's kind of the struggle that I have with Stefan Diggs right now is I don't. I don't know how you fill out the ballot and say that Josh Allen is the MVP and then his leading wide receiver is the offensive player of the year. It just, are you, I don't know if you feel the same way, but for me, that, that just doesn't connect. That doesn't feel right. I would agree. I would also bring up the point that Lamar Jackson has the fifth best odds. A quarterback on this award, as short as Lamar is, goes to show how sensational Lamar can be. It's going to be, in my estimation, a wide receiver unless Jonathan Taylor absolutely picks it up and leads the league in rushing like he did last year. But even those Mm -hmm. odds were not as clear as Cooper Cup a season ago. It would be difficult to have an MVP front runner and his top target win this award. I still think Justin Jefferson will have a field day this year. That would still be where I look. He was six to one entering last night back by a dollar to plus 700. All right, Kev, let's have some fun with one Nathaniel Hackett, the first-year head coach for the Denver Broncos, through two games. Well, Nathaniel Hackett himself has said, the Denver Broncos crowd is right to boo him. It's been a struggle. Our man does not know, like, he seems like he's doing with timeouts or game management. He was the offensive Mm -hmm. mind coming from Green Bay, the OC in Wisconsin for three straight years. Doesn't look like he can call a game and utilize Russell Wilson as well. Kev, before the year... He was tied for the third best odds to win this award mm-hmm. at 16 to 1. He is now 40 to 1, moving well back in this market. Mike McDaniel is the favorite at plus 600. How do you evaluate coach of the year so far through two weeks in the NFL? So I think Mike McDaniel is rightfully the favorite because Tua is someone that we've had so many questions about. To throw six mm-hmm. touchdowns, obviously Tyreek, Jalen Waddle are a big part of that. But Mike McDaniel is going to be able to get a lot of the credit, and he deserves to be that. Brian Dabble has, an int- has a similar case. The difference is the Giants yeah. right now are not winning because Daniel Jones is lighting the world on fire. But he as well belongs to be right in this mix. I think Kevin O'Connell should have come back a little bit, okay? Just because mm-hmm. the rest of this crop here is dealing kind of with an unbeaten status. Nick Sirianni, very deserving as well at his 8-1 to one marker. If the Eagles are the number one seed in the NFC. This might be his award and nobody will have anything to say about it. Doug Peterson, the Jags were the worst team in the NFL. He does not need to win a division. Just in the playoffs, and he has a real case. Last point here, Brandon Staley's family is still booking this market. How he is 10-1 to is beyond me. He is a horrific coach. What he is doing up next to the rest of these names is beyond me. He is a disgrace and should not be here. Ben's top 10 in college football is up next. Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. This is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bama. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for one. In half. game oh, live. Man. Prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live. Overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. All-American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brancy. I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J-E-T-S, just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In-game live all access only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice the morning after Georgia remains the favorites to win a national championship at plus 180, 20 cents in front of Alabama, who they leapfrogged entering week number three in the Saturday slate. But Alabama only 20 cents behind. The Tide take control in a game against Louisiana Monroe, winning that game easily 63-7. to Ohio State's offense puts up 77 points against Toledo. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. We broke these games down all throughout the morning. Teams going ham into overtime, like the Arizona Cardinals and the Vegas Raiders. Ridiculous that they were able to come back. And the coup de grace of every game on Sunday afternoon was what? The Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. The Dolphins getting pasted into the fourth quarter with a miraculous comeback. Now, as I said that, are you stressed out yet? Yeah. Only on Sports Grid. It is going to get tangy here. It was tangy in the commercial break, and it's going to be tangy for Ben's top 10. Entering week number four of this college football season, plenty of schools across the country entering the conference slates. This is when things get very, very interesting. He is Kevin Walsh. I am Ben Stevens. This is Ben's top 10. We are going to go from 10 to 1 and get Kevin's reactions along the way. So, Kevin Walsh, let's start at number 10 in the country, entering Ben's top 10 for the first time this season, the Penn State Nittany Lions, a top 15 team now in the AP Top 25, and Penn State went on the road as a a two-and-a-half-point favorite against Auburn in an SEC stadium and absolutely dismantled the Tigers on the Plains, winning 41-12. to Penn State was a team I was very optimistic about entering this year because I thought they had the talent in the backfield room to be this Mm -hmm. good. And Nick Singleton has looked every bit of that. And the consistency of having Mike Yursich as the offensive coordinator with Sean Clifford has paid dividends. Penn State, number 10 in the country. Number nine, Kev, Oklahoma State moves up from 10th to that ninth spot. But let's focus on number 10. It's a conversation we had last week entering week number three of the college football season. It's a conversation we had briefly on college football today on Saturday morning, setting the big picture stage for Penn State's road test 
against Auburn, and we feel very strongly about where Penn State might be able to be as a factor in the Big Ten Conference. I'm not sure if you're expecting me to have an issue with Penn State, but I do not. Uh, As you said, on college football today, this was an opportunity for kind of the idea of, hey, come on, man, what are we doing with Sean Clifford? Two wins this year on the road versus Purdue – and Penn or, or and versus Auburn that I don't think can be disregarded, and I think as a whole, you know, it's really interesting. If you would have asked me just before this past weekend of action, right? Hey, what do you think about where things sit with the Big Ten? Felt pretty nightmarish. Now, hmm. it's not that all of that's changed, but you're actually now going to feature. I'm pretty confident three teams from the Big Ten inside your top ten. If, if we remember preseason, you only had one. So while maybe, again, it's not the deepest the conference has ever been, if you're believing in Penn State, which you were, by the way, preseason, I know, certainly I've been impressed through three games here, you could argue that they have three title contenders in the conference. Penn State does not feel like a team that either Ohio State or Michigan will be able to look past, circle, line it up as a win. I I agree with you. I've been impressed with Penn State here early season. And a lot of these top 10 rankings that I put out there, projection plays a part into it. We'll look at the Big Ten odds and how that market has worked in the favor of Penn State. So let's go eight Mm -hmm. through six here. Kentucky still remains number eight in the country in my top 10. Arkansas, by the way, fell out after a disappointing performance against Missouri State. But Arkansas, just on the outside looking in, I had to bring Penn State into the top 10. Number seven, Oklahoma. An impressive performance from the Sooners on the road in Lincoln against Nebraska that led to the firing of the Huskers defensive coordinator, Eric Chenander. They put up close to 600 yards of total offense and scored 49 points. And there's another Big Ten team at number six in the country. Kevin, Michigan. Because we're about to find out how good... Michigan is the cupcake of a cakewalk in the non-conference slate against Colorado State. Hawaii and UConn is now over. Michigan State is booked as a 16 and a half point favorite at home in Ann Arbor in a battle of undefeated teams against Maryland on Saturday. If Michigan continues to look dominant, they will move up my top 10. But for now, they remain six in the country. So I understand that there is only so much credit that can be given for beating those level of opponents. But I quite honestly have no idea what else you need Michigan to do versus those opponents. The first half scores over those three games are a combined 107 to zero. Their first, their, their starters have not allowed a single point So far, J.J. McCarthy has as many total touchdowns as incompletions. He didn't even start to begin the season. Blake Corum had five touchdowns last week versus UConn on his first nine carries of the game. The Michigan Wolverines right now, this is the thing for me. If I took Ohio State and they played three three teams and they won every single game by 50, they would be the number one team in the country. For some people. If I did that with Georgia, they'd be the number one team. If I did it with Alabama, they'd be the number one team. Like, Georgia played Samford as a 50-plus point favorite. They won 33 nothing. That's nearly not covering by three touchdowns. They might feature as number one on this list. Ohio State played Arkansas State. Came nowhere near covering that number. Bryce Young was picked off twice versus UL Monroe. So, again, I understand it's bad competition here for the Wolverines. But there, right. there is nothing more Michigan can do than what they have done through these three games. Absolutely so. And I'm not discrediting Michigan for any of their performances. My thought is they have not looked more impressive than the five teams ahead of them in any of those performances given relative competition. And if there are knocks against the top five teams in my poll, we will find out. If Michigan, Kev, is dominant and covers as a 16.5 point home favorite against Maryland, although I have some stats that are very damning to the Terps about their non-conference numbers versus their (laughs) conference games, then Michigan will move up into my top five at the very least, maybe even in to the top four. Michigan has the sixth best price to win a national championship, the sixth best odds to make the college football playoff, 
currently on the FanDuel Sportsbook. And as you saw from those Big Ten championship odds, Ohio State is still minus 250 to win the conference. The best odds of any team of to win any league, group of five, power five, or other in all of college football. So let's go through five through two now. At number five in the country, I still give the edge to Clemson. But Clemson has a huge game this week on the road in Winston-Salem against Wake Forest. There is an opportunity, Kev, for Michigan at least to leapfrog based on how they look if Clemson is slightly disappointing, especially offensively, against this Wake Forest team. But they're number five. Number four in the country, the USC Trojans, after an incredibly impressive performance at home on Saturday in LA as a 10.5 point favorite against Fresno State, SC won 45 to 17, despite the fact every line worked in favor of the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Alabama remains number three, and then at number two, a slight change, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Now listen, the Buckeyes are now the best total offense in all of college football, averaging 569 yards per game. They nearly put up 700 yards. In fact, they might have put up 700 yards of total offense. They did, 763, en route to scoring 77 points against Toledo. And I kept Ohio State at number one because the defense had looked very good so far this year. Now the offense is matching suit. With that being said, Kev, I cannot keep a team that is not yet listed on this board ahead of the Buckeyes. Let's just go ahead and roll it. Georgia is number one in Mm. the country. The Bulldogs, despite not covering against Samford, an incredibly impressive performance against South Carolina in the SEC opener on the road in Columbia and in their strongest test against Power 5 teams, including Oregon in the opener and the Ducks now a top 15 team. That's where Georgia has impressed me the most and especially offensively for the dogs. So I'll try and go in order because there's some, I want to get to the Georgia thing in a minute. Okay. Just to my point though, with Michigan, I have been more impressed with them despite their awful opponents than both Clemson and USC. I, I, it's very, it's, it's unfortunate, but I really do not trust DJU at all. I thought he'd really turn it around this year. I know they scored 48 points. Lottax defense is horrific. I, I, I really think they should have found a way to get Cade Klubnick more reps versus both LaTeX and Furman than they ultimately did. And USC, right? Look, Caleb Williams, my dog, right? Lincoln Riley is basically turned into my guy as well, evidently. They allowed 420 yards of offense against Fresno and 441 yards of offense versus Stanford. The, the defense for USC, if if USC gets into the college football playoff and let's just say they play Ohio State, the total is going to be in the mid-70s. And I probably will still bet the over, and honestly, I really hope that happens. It would be one of the most exciting games of the season, okay? The interesting thing is, though, right? So that's just where I'm at with that. As far as Ohio State goes, though, I actually think we probably saw by far their most impressive performance of the season. And some people might say, oh, of course, come on. I mean, there's, you know, like 77 of that. They played Toledo, who some people think might have the best defense in the MAC. I know it's the MAC, but that's nothing to sneeze at there. And they had three wide receivers with 100 plus yards and a touchdown, and none of them named Jackson Smith and Jigba. So I thought Ohio State put up what was clearly their best performance of the season before they see Wisconsin. I'm curious, though, on your Georgia move, if you'll agree with me here. I don't think Georgia should have moved based on what they did to South Carolina. Spencer Rattler is clearly an awful quarterback. We know this. I don't think South Carolina is good at all. Did you move Georgia because of what Oregon did to BYU? Because that would be something I would understand, honestly, there. Because that's a, to me, the South Carolina thing has nothing to do with it. How good Oregon looked versus BYU retroactively makes everything Georgia did in the opener even more impressive. Yeah. Yes, in part, but mainly because of what they did offensively in that opener and on the road in Columbia against South Carolina. Georgia has scored on 15 of their 18 offensive possessions this year. 13 of those 15 scores have been a touchdown. In their two toughest tests in an SEC game and against the top 15 team in Oregon, they have scored 49 and 48 points respectively, and both of those games have still hit the under. In fact, all three games for Georgia this year, the under, because still, somehow, some way, the Dogs are the mm-hmm. best scoring defense in the country, only allowing, on average now, 
3.3 points per game. And Kev, we're not just seeing that in my top 10. We're seeing that reflected in the odds market across all of college football. Georgia is the favorite to win the national championship. Georgia has the best odds to make the college football playoff and their odds to win the SEC slightly working in their favor as well. Minus 130 now, the tide behind them with the second best price at plus 110. And this is the conversation as it relates to the SEC, Georgia and Alabama in the college football playoff. Like last year, can we see two teams from the same league get a bid to the CFP? Early on, it looks like it's shaping up to that for that to be the case once again. I still don't think so, and that's because I think the rest of the SEC has looked solid, okay? If you look at Alabama, they're going to play Vanderbilt this week. I'm assuming lay maybe, what, four touchdowns in the game, maybe maybe more, okay? But after that, yeah. Arkansas, A&M, Tennessee, Miss State, LSU, Ole Miss. I mean, that's five very legitimate opponents that they're going to play in a row. Now, Georgia's got still another month of football of beating teams by 21-plus points every single game. But then, Florida, Tennessee, Miss State, Kentucky. I think both of these teams could pick up a loss before an eventual date in an SEC title game. I would yep. still bet against both of them making it in, Ben. And that can't happen, by the way. Both of them cannot have a regular season loss if both are going to get into the college football playoff, which right. gives plus money opportunities other areas like USC, like Clemson, plus 170, USC plus two. 50. Even Penn State now, Kev, the eighth best odds to make a college football playoff. Some final thoughts to close out this opening hour of TMA. Up next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. This is a good Purdue football team. They lose George Karloff. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bama. I think Vandy can win the game, take a point. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet can get, get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. All-American at Georgia, man. Now he's done. Anyway, I like where you're going, Brancy. I love those cats. <laughs> Jaguars plus four and a half. Put it in. I endorse it. Robert Sala, you suck. Your team sucks. J-E-T-S, just end the season. Y'all need to come better. You know what? I'm giving the big dummy award to Robert Sala. Take my receipt, Robert. I want my money back. In-game live all access only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. Georgia remains the favorites to win a national championship at plus 180, 20 cents in front of Alabama, who they leapfrogged entering week number three in the Saturday slate. But Alabama only 20 cents behind. The Tide take control in a game against Louisiana Monroe, winning that game easily 63-7. to Ohio State's offense puts up 77 points against Toledo. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. We broke these games down all throughout the morning. Teams going ham into overtime, like the Arizona Cardinals and the Vegas Raiders. Ridiculous that they were able to come back. And the coup de grace of every game on Sunday afternoon was what? The Miami Dolphins and the Baltimore Ravens. 
The Dolphins getting pasted into the fourth quarter with a miraculous comeback. Now, as I said that, are you stressed out yet? Yeah. Only on Sports Grid. Closing out hour number one, the morning after, live right here on this Tuesday on Sports Grid, Sirius XM, Channel 159, all across the Spiz Grizz Network. That's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. Kevin Walsh has been here for most of this opening hour of the morning after. Kevin Walsh last night was in Philadelphia to take in the Birds' home opener, his team, and now the team that is tied for the second best odds to win the NFC Championship. So after what we saw last night of the four teams on the FanDuel Sportsbook right now with the four best prices to win the NFC title who are you taking following two weeks in the National Football League season that's what we asked you and fade the public of those four teams the Bucks are the favorites the Eagles and Packers tied for the second best price and then the reigning Super Bowl champs the Rams the fourth best number who do you think Comes home with a conference championship in 2022. And Kevin Walsh, a lot of people must have watched that doubleheader last night on Monday because the Eagles are the overwhelming favorite here, <laughs> according to the public. 52.6% at Sports Grid TV on Twitter think the Philadelphia Eagles have the best chance of winning the NFC championship this season. Kev, I know you're not fading the public necessarily, but does it scare you the public feels that strongly about the birds? You know what's funny, Ben, is as for a while I was scared that everyone picked the Eagles to win the NFC East, and then it got to a point as now people are just smart. Now, obviously, the DAC injury impacts things and, and whatnot. That is people enjoying a little too much Monday night foot. 53% of the poll is too far. I'll look, I I love what I've seen from the Eagles. I think they're very legit. My preseason pick was the Niners. The quarterback changed. I don't know what I'm supposed to even do with that. I do think the Bucs still deserve to be the favorites. There's a real world where they maybe have the best defense in the NFL. If that happens, at some point, Tom Brady will be able to do his part. I promise you that. The Bucs should still be the favorite in the market. I was surprised to see the Eagles have that much of the vote. Okay, Dubs, thank you very much for your time. Hour number two of the morning after is up next. 